Welcome to Jatai Academy. Today we're going to be doing a technical deep dive in how to texturize hair. And we're going to approach it from two different ways. We're going to approach it one way of texturizing to remove weight if the hair is overly thick. And then we're going to also texturize it in a way to create separation and pieciness and add texture to the shapes you've already done. So we've got a lot of different methods to show you. So let's begin. So the very first way we want to texturize is let's think about we've got a, a one length haircut and the hair is just too thick. You know, you get that broom effect and the hair doesn't have a whole lot of movement and swing to it. So we want to remove some weight real gently just to diffuse the, the thickness of the hair so it's not so thick and bulbous. We don't want to introduce any kind of separation or any kind of movement to it. We're just trying to remove weight. So I'm going to start with my feather styling razor. And I'm going to take a small thin section here in the back, or you can start wherever you want to remove the weight. You just want to make sure that this, the sections are not too thick. So I'll take a section, comb that straight through. And now here, I'll do the claw method on my razor where I'll take three fingers on one side, two fingers on the other, keep my wrist straight, and I just very gently fillet the top of that section. And that's going to remove some of the thickness of the hair without introducing shifting back or forth or pieciness. I'm going to go through and comb this section down to show you again, do the claw method very gently. I don't want to make this section too wide because if it's on a curved part of the head, right, I want to keep that section flat through there because if it's on a curve, it's going to thin one, one area of the section more than another area. So I want to work in little flat sections of head so that the razor will touch the hair at the same time. Comb that down and then very gently just push the razor against the hair, tilt the blade up, and then just gently go through all the way towards the ends. I'll remove some weight, but I will still have a nice solid shape. Add a little bit more hair, a little bit more. Now this section is a little bit wider across the head. So I've got three flat sections. I got in the middle, I got to the right, and I got to the left. So we're gonna start in the middle again, very gently, just like I'm filleting fish, just right on top as I go through and down. And I wanna be very mindful the more pressure that I put against the hair, the more hair that's going to come off. All right, so I want to be, that's bad. <laughs> I got too excited on that one. But that was an example. So nice, easy, gently laying the razor against the head, and then just very gently filleting all the way down and through. And remove as much hair as you need to. So that's the first way of removing hair when the shape is too thick. Okay, so now say that I want to texturize the hair, I want to remove some weight, but I also want to create a pieciness and a flickiness to it. So instead of laying the razor flat against the head, I'm going to go in vertically. And by vertically, I will go through and start to put channels into the sections so that that will not only thin it, but it will create separation. It will force the ends to separate into little pieces. The first method is not going to force separation. It's only going to diffuse the weight. This way, I'll create separation. So I'll go through same method and just gently put the blade through the section and had whatever kind of gap that I think I need, I go and cut me a nice little angle right into that. And now I remove hair, but I also force to separate into pieces and that will separate much better. So now we go through and we'll do the same thing on the other side. With this method, I don't want to pick up much hair from underneath because then that's going to get recut. The first method, since I'm only doing surface level texturizing and razoring, I don't have to worry so much about that. But as I start to do internal textures like this, I only want to texturize the hair that's in my hand. So there's my section. Try to maintain the same kind of gap, and I'll curl my fingers away as I get closer to the root of my fingers. That's going to give me much more separation 
with each section that I go through and texturize like that. So internal texture with separation using my feather razor. Now there, there is a way that I can go through and do kind of a stopgap between both of those where either I'm filleting it and just diffusing the weight or creating internal texture and separation. There's a way I can get in between both of those and that's by using the texturizing blade on my feather styling razor. So I can use these blades instead. And so what happens here is I have a little area of guard that covers part of the blade and areas where the blades open and it has gaps. And where it has gaps, that allows hair through to the blade and that's what cuts. So I'll actually cut little channels as I fillet it. So it gives me a little less weight removal than just laying my feather razor against it solidly and removing the whole thing. It doesn't give me as much weight removal as if I go through and channel it, so it's in between. So I'll take this, um, so I'll take my feather styling razor with my texturizing blade, take a section about as wide as the blade, start where I want my uh, texturizing to start, which is usually about halfway. I tend to never really go deeper than halfway. After I get there, I'll just go through and gently glide all the way through to the end. And now you can see I'll get separation and diffusion of weight at the same time. Pick up what I want to cut, comb through. Uh, this is getting a little dry. So I'm going to apply a little bit of Jatai Blade Glide just to keep all the hair nice and moist and evenly saturated. The more evenly saturated that the sections are, the more even that my razor cut's going to be. There we go, take my next section through there. Start about halfway. Once I lay it on the head, on the hair, I don't remove it. There's a little bit right through there I need to take out. Boom, got that, perfect. Let's go to the other side. Pull this down and through. Give us a thumbs up, click the subscribe, and the notification bell to be notified of future Jatai Academy content. A little bit right there. Down and through. And then you can see I get a little bit of internal texture, a little bit of weight removal, and it's not nearly as severe as either the first two methods that I showed you. So, texturizing blade with the feather styling razor, filleting the section to create a little bit of separation and weight removal. So now we're gonna move on to texturizing dry hair. The razor works better on wet hair, but thinning scissors and point cutting and things like that, they work better on dry hair so that you can see how much weight removal that you're actually getting. So th the first way that we're gonna approach this is very much uh, an old school method way where you're just gonna use a thinning scissor and cut it the same shape that the line that you cut. So if I've cut straight across, that's the way I'm gonna go in with my thinning scissor. If I've cut it at an angle, then that's the way I'm gonna go in with my thinning scissor. That way, the internal shape that I create is gonna mimic the external shape. So it has a better chance of everything flowing together. Turn to where the straight blade is on the bottom. Put my fingers in the last inch or so. One, pull out two, pull out. And that's usually enough to give you enough texturizing and thinning on the ends to bevel it and to make the shape a lot more pliable and give it more movement. I don't have to go crazy. If the hair is very thick, I may go through and do it an extra time or two, or depending upon the hair, I may do it a lot. So we're gonna continue to pull the section down, pull out any hair that was previously thinned, Get that together, straight across. Now the good thing about these scissors, my Tokyo thinning scissors, is that they're seamless. So when I go through and I put a line internally, I don't instantly see a cut line internally. It diffuses and it blends away, so I don't have a bunch of steps in the middle of this. Next section, I can go through and do the same thing. The longer the hair is, the more internal that I can go. 
a nice seamless thinning scissor like the Tokyo is excellent for this type of work. Try to not lift up any hair from previously cut sections because then I don't want to thin the same section two, three, or four times. I only want to thin it once when it's in my hands and then that's it. If I need to go back after I've done everything and thin it, then I'll go back after the fact. So that's texturizing with thinning scissors, blunt shapes, and just softening the edge. If I wanted to remove more hair and not work myself to death, and I wanted to create some movement internally, then I'll go through and take a vertical section, remove the hair that's already been cut, pull this hair forward, and then go through parallel to my section and thin from about halfway through to the ends. And I will remove a lot more hair that way and introduce more movement. You can already see how that shape is collapsing much more than the piece next to it. So that will remove a lot more hair and it will be completely seamless and I can remove more hair where I feel like I need to and less hair where it needs. Because not all sections of the head are the same thickness. Like right here is a good example of that. If I look at that, it's thinner right through here, it's thinner right through there, and then it's a little thicker there. So a little thicker, a little thicker, a little thinner. So maybe I hit it once and pull that section out. And then where it's thicker up here, hit it a couple of times and diffuse. So I can even out the amount of weight on each individual section as I'm working through by going through and doing this kind of method. So we're gonna pull that out at an angle, thin this through. And I don't know what that's called, what that method's called, so we're just gonna call it rustling. <laughs> so I went through and rustled this side by holding out my section vertically and removing weight internally as if I was point cutting with my thinning scissors. I have a lot more control than just putting a straight line in. Let's move on to the next one. So then, so the next way that I can thin a section of hair is going through and using my straight scissor. I'm going to use my Kyoto scissors from Jatai and this method is similar to what I've just done with the thinning scissors where I go through and point cut internally, but this method is gonna be as controlled, if not more controlled, and it's not gonna be as diffused. So the way I'll do this is I'll go through and take a vertical section, put my fingers in pretty deep, roll my fingers over so I have a really good grip on that. I have a death grip on there. And now I'm gonna take the scissor put the, the blade in, and as I bring the tip to the hair, I will close the blade. And you'll see me take little points out. And as I start to go a little faster, it will start to look like this. Where it's thicker, I can thin it a little bit more. Where it's thinner, I can thin it a little bit less. And this way, it's it's more controlled than if I'm doing the thinning scissor because I can hit exactly where I want the removal of weight to, to be removed from, but it's also not gonna be as diffused. So maybe I wanna keep my shape really solid, but I need to remove some internal weight, and this would be a good method for doing that. And this works really, really well on curly hair as long as you don't get it too close to the scalp. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to is the angle of my scissor when I do this. If I take my scissor and it's very parallel to the hair, I will take out very little when I hit it each time. The more of an angle that I go with the scissor, the larger the piece that I'm gonna texturize out of it. Point cutting internally with my Kilto it's not a thinning scissor, but it is a thinning scissor because it thinned the hair with my Kyoto scissors. Let's give a real world example of how you might texturize some hair for effect. Now we have our model here. She's got her little blunt bangs. She's got her nice little haircut. So say that I want to soften 
this hair up. So the first thing I wanna do is go through and use my Tokyo thinning scissors. I'm gonna separate right here in the middle and I'm gonna be very, very aggressive with how much hair I remove. So I'm gonna lay my fingers right up to her hairline. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And go through and thin it really, really deep, about halfway. Well, I'm gonna thin this really deep. I'm gonna go through and do it again because these mannequin heads have a lot of hair. So now we've got that thin and you can start to see it's wanting to separate already just by removing the weight. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I did it two runs, one, two, three, four, five, six. One through, let's do one more run through there. Maybe not as many hits. That's looking pretty good. You can see already just by going through and using my thinning scissors, I have gone through and changed the entire feel of these bangs. There we go. So now from here, I'm just gonna place my blade in and then gently close the blade all the way through. And this is gonna create a very, very strong blunt separation to this diffused texture that I've already created with my thinning scissor. So it's gone through and blunted everything up that I had just cut in through there. Try to not, try to keep all my gaps even, but maybe for artistic reasons you don't want to. Just go through, don't poke her in the eye. And now we've got some nice short little PC bangs. Follow us on your favorite social media at Jatai Feather. You're looking pretty good, girl. Here's our end result. I think it looks pretty neat. You know, if I could have bangs, girl, I would have my bangs just like yours. <laughs> no, not really. I'd have it like Elvis. Anyway, a lot of different texturizing techniques techniques that we covered today. Which one's your favorite? Which one do you use the most? And I would encourage you to practice some of the others and add them to your repertoire to make you a much more varied, solid hairdresser that will give you a lot more options in how you want to texturize and thin hair. Not all texturizing methods work on all different types of hair. So let us know what you'd like to see in the future. And also, please check out the Jatai Academy. There's all kinds of fantastic information on there to make you a better hairstylist and barber. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.